السلام علیکم سعیدی وعلیکم السلام نمت اللہ سعیدی when we recite the Quran in reality it's reading us how do we notice a sign of hypocrisy or dirty heart and deficiency in ourselves how do we notice the sign everyone has to do their tafakkur and their contemplation and when we become more subtle less hard more soft, we, we know our hip hypocrisies, we know what we're doing, only Allah and ourselves know what we do and when we recite the Qur'an we understand where we're falling short. But the, this is about the salawats, the love, the istighfar, all these practices and then understanding that as soon as we're going to read Qur'an with wudu and with reverence that we're holding the heart of Prophet in our hands. And when we're reciting, recite slow, contemplate and ask that Allah dress us, the nazar of Prophet to bless us and fill our hearts with light. Don't read fast, you're not in a race to, to finish. This is a, the wrong madhab understanding. That's why they, they do Ramadan with the two and a half, three hours of recitation for non-Arabs. That is not necessary nor have we seen these big awliya ever do that. That concept is, is not correct that you just have to keep listening to it, not understanding it and then after three days of Ramadan you run away. That's uh, for Arabs that comprehend and understand Arabic fluently and in Ramadan they listen for two hours, they listening because they understand it's their language. So for those who want to comprehend Qur'an and to be blessed by it, you have to think to yourself, you make your wudu, you make your contemplation, make your madad, uh, visualize yourself with Rosa Sharif in the presence of Prophet Read a few ayatul kareem and contemplate. If you are reading Surat Yaseen from the awrad then recite it nice and in a, in a diligent speed, not fast to yourself. and. And, and think of the words and, and the reality of it and try to meditate on that reality. That's what's important to be dressed by its understanding and the reverence and how to revere something is what gives its secret to us. So the more that we revere the reality it begins to… As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To dress us from the secret. You can read three verses, contemplate and meditate to be dressed by more realities than if you quickly think, I'm going to read four surahs really fast. What, what then was that? There's a blessing in any time you touch Qur'an but what you're trying to achieve would have been achieved with just a few ayahs contemplating and asking its reality to come, its light to come and then if you can then you contemplate the words that are be rec being recited and alhamdulillah and that light and, and that's the, a form of meditation. And now that they gave us more information that's a meditation in the presence of Prophet So and, and asking that, say, Ya Rasul Kareem that this is your heart and your love and I'm asking for its light and its guidance to enter to my heart. And anything that we do slowly and accurately it shows a manner and respect. So that's different. If you have certain recitations that you have to accomplish for the day then you know you make your istighfar and recite what you have to recite for that day. And then the others are the meditation with the Qur'an. So this is a meditation with Holy Qur'an on how to recite it, visualize yourself in the presence of Prophet 
and to retrieve its lights and its understandings. The others that are reciting for their awrad that they have a juz to recite, they have this to recite then they recite those inshaAllah, that's different. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Ya Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi Sayyidi for a while now I've been waking myself up reciting certain ayahs of the Qur'an for Fajr. Is this considered the Qur'an reading me and guiding me? Well anytime you wake up and read Qur'an, Qur'an is reading you. Is that considered the Qur'an is reading you because you're waking up? I don't, I don't, I don't know the point of that. Anytime you're reading Qur'an, the point of this whole discussion was that you're not going to take any secrets because the secret is the Qur'an is looking at you if you're worthy of it. So that was just an, an adab of understanding. Now do you think the Qur'an is waking you up to get up and to read? That, that's something else. What we're talking about is that when you do read Qur'an, Humble yourself and realize the Qur'an is actually analyzing you and if it finds you worthy it will reveal its secrets and its reality. So this is something different I think than what people are asking inshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Taala. Sayyidi, what is the reality of the ear and the fact that our balance and ability, ability to walk is in our ears. Mm. Alhamdulillah, that's a good one. That the importance of guidance with the ears. And Allah gives that, that reality is based on your ability to stand straight and upright. So your vertical posture is going to be based on your ears. So that has an immense power. If Allah should give you vertigo and some sort of damage into your hearing, you can't even stand up. You, you throw up and have to lie down. You have no more ability for a vertical position. So then it has a tremendous importance Allah is showing that if it comes under attack you have an inability to stand anymore or to walk all your whole sort of… Uh, I don't know what those devices are when they try to put a device that spins so that it can stay upright. On these scooters that don't fall down they put a… it's a spinning device that spins to keep it in a state in a vertical position. Allah gave us a, an electronic system within ourselves is based on the ears. So the vibration and the eardrum has a direct influence onto your standing upright position. So if a disease comes into that it affects the ability to stand upright. So the ears then play a tremendous role in the energy coming in, in the reality of the opening of the soul. So then we safeguard the ears because you can see how important something is by what shaitan is focusing on. So the fool on the hill looks down. So the majnoon or majdu and, and spiritual people the concept was they sit up high and they observe. And when they observe they can keep seeing what shaitan is focusing on. So when you sit back and just observe or look at a park and you see all these people like dancing, screaming, yelling the music <coughs> you can see shaitan is focusing on their hearing is attacking them and you can see how his battlefield is by looking at what he's done to 99% of the population. So he's electronically attacking them because they're finding out more and more of these Bluetooth devices are completely frying the brain and all of your inner eardrum systems. The sound is so loud that it again is affecting the eardrum, why? So that you go off of your vertical access point. And then spiritually he's destroying them through the soul. From what they hear their soul is becoming damaged. So the concept of the majdub that sits up high and looks at the people, he's basically watching how shaitan is fighting. 
He sits the shaitanis after their ears and he's going to physically destroy their ears with the, with the actual device and the sound because it's coming in too loud. So of course it's going to break the drums and destroy everything and by destroying their souls. This is the door to the soul. He's putting so much garbage on the door to the soul, the soul can never come out to experience its energy and its reality and he's enslaving them, he's enslaving them, right? So if somebody can break away from that system and begin to listen and hear and meditate and hear Qur'an and hear salawats, what happens? Their soul is coming out, the soul is breaking free and coming out and enjoying these nasheeds and that's why they go into a hall. So the shaykh, in the presence of the shaykh, these zikrs, these majlis, the energies come to release the soul from the ears and that people will go into a hall and feel the energy and that's the reality of the soul that these, these sounds, the vibrations are so powerful that it takes shaitan's lock off of the ear. As a result they experience the nasheeds and salawats with their soul and that is their hal, that's their energy. That becomes the secret of the flow of energy coming to them. That's why we said the nasheeds are so important. People think it's their own practices that are important, right? Oh it's time for salah because I have to go pray. Oh what I can do to you through the nasheed is far more important and far more powerful than you praying 1400 years. You won't achieve what, what can you be dressed with, with one hour of nasheed with us. Because you think you're going to get somewhere with your salah? You're doing your salah because Allah ordered you. Do you think that is in any way the same power that's coming with these realities? No, because this is the hadith of Prophet one hour of tafakkur is seventy years of worshipness. So means those actions we do them, Allah ordered them. But do you think the power is coming from that? The power is coming that when you sit for voluntary love and you sit in this state of love and Allah lowers this energy and lock on your ear and your soul hears the salawats and your soul becomes free and dressed from the energy of the salawat, you would have never achieved that 1500 years of praying. How? How would you have achieved that? So it means the two are completely different oceans. That which you do is mandatory and very difficult to achieve a reality through those mandatory practices. But that which you do voluntary out of love after you did the mandatory, you put it aside because Allah said, they did their fad, then they came to me with voluntary. As soon as they sit with voluntary worship it's an act of love, Allah doesn't judge love. And as soon as they sit with rightly guided, immediately they use the nasheeds to bring a state of a hal onto people. And as soon as they reach this hal and this energy, what happens at the reality of light? That you're now connecting with the light of the shaykhs and in the association of the shaykhs. How much light is being dressed upon a person? What realities are being dressed upon a person? How much of your reality actually stays in that world of light? Because that which enters paradise never leaves paradise. And how long are you actually in that state? For you it may have been a minute, five minutes, ten minutes, half an hour nasheed and it could be ununderstood time. The world of light and the reality of light is not something that can be spoken about. As soon as we enter into that world of light you've entered into a timeless reality. And as soon as you're meditating and hauling and that's why the shaykh is then teaching you then connect, make your madad, listen to the salawats. And if you can make the madad the shaykh will begin to calm, lower that energy and your soul will begin to experience a hal. Every time you meditate and listen to these nasheeds and salawats that's the power. 
So people thinking, oh they're doing this nasheed, this, that's not very powerful. This is the biggest secret is the nasheed. These nasheeds are the biggest power because it can play a, a, a tune to bring the power of the soul out because the soul is, is coming with this ishq and love. There's no way to call the soul out by just saying, come, right? But it comes with an ishq. And this one Sayyidina Ibrahim said, Ya Rabbi show me how you revive the dead. And Allah said, why? You don't believe. Sayyidina Ibrahim is a prophet from Bani Israel's and the awliya Allah of Sayyidina Muhammad are warith al-anbiya. They are the inheritors of the prophets of Bani Israel. Sayyidina Ibrahim asked Allah how you revive the dead? He said, take these birds, put four sections, call them to yourself. And as he called them to himself, the four parts came together and became whole again. The same power Allah is given, uh, the authority of that power is in the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad and that the nafs, hawa, shaitan and dunya are the four enemies that block every person. And they have those because the bird of their soul is cut to four pieces. Your soul is not whole, it's a bird that can fly to realities. But one section of it your nafs has cut its head, the other section shaitan has cut its head, the other section the body taken by the hawa, the desires and the other by dunya. So that soul of yours is cut into four sections and never can fly. But the authority that Allah has given to awliyaullah, certain ones, not everyone has that ability, is as soon as these nasheeds play, as soon as these salawats and utific sounds play, they can call all four into one. Means they can break the chains that are blocking them and call the souls into that presence to be present in that nasheed and that salawat and to be presented to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and then to be dressed by the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad that you can never achieve in the thousands of years of praying. So these are not something that people understand and what they deem to be important is nafsani because they think that the things that they will do that they'll get up and move will actually open something for them. So no, it's actually things that you don't do that will open something for you. Sit patiently on your carpet or on your couch, have a good heart, be clean, stay quiet. The rest is in their hands. It's not the actions that you do, it's the action that you don't do that's important. So that's the reality of meditation. Meditation is a, is a non-acting act. You just sit there, don't move, enter a state of death, have good character, breathe, just breathe. And as a result with your focus the energy can come. Play the salawats so that they can lock, unlock the hearing and bring out the energy of the soul, make the connection with the soul to the world of light and the light and the power that comes to that, it can't be understood, inshaAllah. Well, 20 people online is going to ask now, please Shaykh post the dalil in Qur'an and hadith. <laughs> so throughout the talk we've been quoting hadith and Qur'an, so I don't know why they asked for that. Even in salt, we posted on the salt and the importance of salt and we posted that on TikTok and all oh, you could get back from from uh, certain continent people is, please dalal and hadith, the dalal of this, the Qur'an and hadith of this. Everyone has two fingers, why you don't just type it yourself on Google? Ten pages of it comes up, hadith of salt. You have two hands with your fingers, type hadith of salt. All the hadith come, why you have to make that comment on a video and show you have bad character? When you deal with the shaykh you don't have to ask for any dalil. If you think you need a dalil, use your two hands and Google it. 
and always word hadith and the subject and you come with all the, the hadith that you need to satisfy your nafs, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa How can we differentiate between ear hearing and heart hearing? And does heart hearing have feelings? Please forgive me. Yeah, every sense has two levels. One is to hear with your physicality and train the physical hearing so that the heart hearing can actually work. That's why we are a nation of Samina wa Tana. So the one whom doesn't hear with their physical ears, they don't want to hear it, they don't want to listen, they don't listen to the guidance, at the end of the talk they're like, ah, I'm not going to do what he said. The spiritual hearing doesn't open and if they do think it opened it's only from their nafs and shaitan playing with them. So the physical hearing has to be disciplined. That's why we are a nation that we hear and we obey, we heard the talk, we listen. We heard the manners, we listen. We heard the actions, we do it. Say, no, no, I don't want to do any of those things and I just want to sit there and have like a spiritual heart. How is that going to happen? Means that shaitan is blocking here and you think it's easier to get into here? So, means you first have to fight shaitan out here where every time shaitan is saying something, Auzubillah and because he's going to whisper at everything. And as soon as you can fight that shaitan and fight him and fight him and fight him, then your hearing outside is becoming clear. And when it becomes clear, now you have clarity in your inner heart hearing. But if everything shaitan is blocking here, how, how would it come into your heart? So that has a tremendous importance and that's the same if everything, every sense has two. So how can you have dirty eyes and think you have a clean heart, right? So if everything you're looking at, look, 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 eat everything with your eyes, your hungry, 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 hungry eyes, your heart is, is sick. There's no way you can have a clean heart with dirty eyes. The first is you have to clean your physical eyes, don't look. Learn how to cleanse your eyes, don't look at these images, look down, wash your eyes at night and in the shower in the morning that, let the water to come and say, Ya Rabbi clean my eyes, clean the vision of my eyes, clean whatever my eyes has, has seen of incorrectness. So that has to be a continuous state that the servant knows I have to clean always outside for the inside to, to be cleaned. There's no one who could say, no it doesn't matter with my outside eyes, I have a good heart. So no, it's not true. If your eyes are dirty your heart is dead. So it's the eyes that have to be clean, have to be trained, continuously have to be washed because they've been bombarded, bombarded everywhere. There's no doubt that it's being bombarded. So they have to clean, they have to wash in the shower, rinse and, and let the water to wash away all the impurities and see their soul asking to be washed by these waters like the body's washed in the time of death. And as a result and they safeguard their vision to the best of their ability and then they meditate and contemplate so that the vision can come to the heart. And same is safeguarding their breath and their mouth so they can safeguard their breath and their lungs. So every sense, every sense has to be sort of heightened to become more subtle. So the one whom is sensitive with their physical senses then has a spiritual sense, they can feel energies. If their physicality has no sensitivity then how can they have spiritual sensitivity? And again we said that the sense of smell, all five senses. If their sense of physical smell is okay to be bad, everything is okay to smell bad, they smell bad, everything around them smells bad, their car smells bad, their home smells bad. You think that they have a, a reality of fragrance within them? How is it possible? It just circumvented the nose and went into their soul? The one whom's sensitive through his nose, he picks up everything, doesn't like that bad smell, doesn't want this to be bad smell. Because his sensitivity is from his reality. When he's sensitive to it and he begins to meditate, 
he picks up the slightest bad fragrance that's coming. And that's what's important so that when nefarious energies are coming around the spiritual reality is picking up that fragrance. But if, if, if you house yourself with horrible smells and, and inappropriate smells how, how could you distinguish between a nefarious being and just every other energy and smell around you? So all of the senses on the outside have to be fixed and then the inner reality. That's what Prophet described for people who want hadith is that Allah made perfume dear to me. So that, that had a deep reality means Prophet is teaching the importance of beautific cleanly character, be clean, be beautific and fragrant <coughs> cleanliness. Not fragrant the whole world smells you and for women it's not allowed to be smelt. We're talking about for the men and to be clean and to have a, a clean uh, character so that you are sensitive to fragrance and sensitive to this reality of an angelic aroma, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Walaykum as salaam can Mulana expand on the last week about the reality of the shaykh as a portal to Prophet ﷺ? Prophet is a portal to Allah It inspired thoughts about where we point in to in our being and with our actions. Yeah, you know, after we talked about that, one of our guys, uh, Muhammad uh, alhamdulillah sent a nice article from NASA on what are portals. So we posted that on, online, so NASA is now trying to come with the science of it is anytime there's a disruption in the magnetic field and that energy of magnetic field they determine that when there's a disruption or something happening in a magnetic field that must be an energy vibration to a different dimension. So if you study with that understanding all of what we're teaching is energy. So the shaykh's vibration is much more different than other people, means that he's reversed the contract. In his meditation, his contemplation and his very presence is his soul on him. So his soul governs his reality. As a result his energy is not from here, it's from the heavens. Everyone else is carrying their physical body and then they die and they go to the heavens and meet the reality of their soul. The one whom died before he died Allah reversed the contract that his soul is with him on this physical earth. As a result of being in their presence you're in his paradise, you're in the vibration of his paradise, you're eating from his paradise, you're drinking from his paradise. As soon as you meditate with a person from paradise and their paradise reality what happens? Their energy comes to be present with you and that's why it's so immensely important. So when you're sitting at home you're meditating, meditating, these are all tafakkur. We, we described the Qur'an, it said that, كُنُوا مَا صَادِقِينِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Allah saying, have a taqwa wa كُنُوا مَا صَادِقِينَ Keep the company of truthful servants. Allah doesn't care for dunya so means that in Allah's eternal reality He's teaching you eternally keep with truthful servants. Just like when you say, As Salaamu Alaykum Ayyuhan Nabi wa Ibadullahi Salihin, the shaykh is from Ibadullahi Salihin that you are giving salams in every prayer. You, you, Allah is mandating for you your manners and in every prayer you're supposed to give them salams. So the shaykh is one of the Ibadullahi Salihin that you're giving salams in your salah. Imagine if we had to sit and give dalil all day long to people. It's all there, it's all in the reality but who want to keep de- trying to teach like that? You could never go forward because you're always trying to prove something to people. But all of Islam is this reality. So as a result when you keep the company of these paradise souls whom they, they're operating from this reality what happens? The vibration of their energy is not from this earth and as a result it becomes a portal into paradise. If you go to Medina that's an immense portal, immense portal. 
that is continuously sending out its emanations as the holy presence of Prophet is there. And where Allah described another portal Sayyidina Musa It's though the fire of that energy Allah wanted to draw him. As soon as he entered in Allah said, take your shoes off you are now in the presence of something holy. You've entered into a portal now take your shoes off. It's not for that reality and this presence of this paradise. So immediately had to take his shoes off entering into that energy. And at that energy he was now speaking into the heavens on a on a earth speaking into the heavens. So Allah has continuously given this example throughout Qur'an and throughout the history of Islam. Sidna Maryam salam had a portal because of her worship was so strong and so powerful that the entire temple of Bani Israel didn't have that portal. So she was in their temple that they didn't even understand because that was the proof that the temple wasn't a portal. So when Sayyidina Zakariya was coming and seeing Sayyidina Maryam salam has sustenance not from this time, not from this, this season. He understood immediately a portal has opened in her niche and in that portal they're feeding her, giving her whatever she wants. At that time he recognized with his heart he's a Prophet of Allah his whole temple didn't have that. So it's not based on, on only a religious place may have it, the person themselves may be the portal. So when he entered into the presence of Sayyidina Maryam salam, immediately he made his du'a and immediately Sayyidina Jibra'il salam said, Bravo you recognize this as a portal Allah is accepting your du'a. 99 years he prayed and it didn't open. So it means these are the examples tariqahs teaches people, 99 years you may be praying never will open because Allah wants us to learn. This is a Prophet of Allah that asked for 99 years for somebody to inherit his reality and Allah didn't grant it until, and he wrote it, until he would go into a room, be humble enough to see that Sitna Maryam a woman in a Jewish man's temple has a secret. And immediately he recognized it, he made the du'a, Sayyidina Jibra'il appeared and said, Allah has accepted your du'a. So portals are everywhere. As soon as we connect with them and that's why the talk is that you connect with that energy, you receive from paradise realities. That's what the shaykhs are teaching. That when you get from the store it's not that you could get it, it's because the dress of that portal, the dress of that reality is dressing upon people. When you ask for their du'a and you support that dress is coming to bless people. Otherwise how are they going to complete their mission upon this earth? Allah gives them that reality so they can teach and attract people, so they can preach and reach people. If Allah didn't give that to them and say, oh we'll hold it for your paradise, you don't need it now, okay then there would be five people and that would not be the case. But Allah wants their da'wah to go out, wants that barakah to go out, wants that blessing to go out and that's how the system is, especially in the last days before the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi they're going to open all sorts of crazy fitna. And the time is, is coming even quicker. Now King Hussein has arrived in the UK, long live the king that Allah inshaAllah grant that uh, is a big wazir for Sayyidina Mahdi salam that he doesn't know it or know it doesn't, is not of any importance but it was a tremendous sign of the arrival of kings and uh, Allah's kings coming back onto this earth. So these are big, big signs and, and, and big openings coming upon this earth. These realities that people haven't heard of teachings that they haven't heard of, realities of Qur'an they haven't heard of, these are all a sign of the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi and that the realities that are coming are not understood by people and uh, become something ajeeb for many people to hear these types of things and to understand these types of things. But when the dunya goes into its fitna and craziness and shocked, how is this happening, how is this, oh remember that the tariqahs are teaching, yes there are portals. Don't be shocked, you don't need to go to a satanic portal, 
You go to the portals of Rahman in which the paradise realities and paradise uh, people are sitting there. So as a result the shaykhs are a portal, as soon as you sit in their presence, make a madad into their presence, they open a door that enter and move through and enter into the reality of Prophet inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi, I have no words to express how much today's soba is relevant to all that I've been experiencing lately. May Allah Azawajal dress you and bless you eternally and raise your stations higher and higher. Thank you, Allah bless you and dress you and dress everyone for asking and, and commenting and participating. So alhamdulillah, this gives a, a zeal in which to, to do more and to give more and to teach more and alhamdulillah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa How do we always stay in the cave? Seems like when we go out in dunya in daytime, sometimes we lose ourselves. What are the strategies of this war? Nothing, just you have to do your dunya thing, that's not a problem. But always retreat back to the cave. It's the one who's dangerous is when he stays out of the cave too long. Right? So you go out for cave, you have to get your stuff, you have to do your things, that's not a problem. So always you have to go back into the cave, that means that wherever you're praying, you sit and meditate and go back into the cave to get a refreshment, to get an energy and then you go back. So every salah is the entry into the cave, well what's the difference? Every time you sit and meditate at the end of your salah, you're back with the shaykh, back at Ruza Sharif asking to be dressed and to bless, to be re-energized, revitalized. So it's a, it's a continuous, continuous process and when you go home you enter back into the cave and spend a little time in meditation, then you spend time with the children, family, loved ones. And at the end of the night everybody's asleep, again a little bit of time for the cave, go to bed wake up a little bit earlier for fajr, enter into your cave. So your cave is always there. The danger is leaving the cave in which you stop doing that. And then you feel yourself overwhelmed with negativity and then you're again, what we said is proactive that you want to conquer this. Reactive is when the wood hits your head and then you feel like, oh my god I got to connect back with the shaykh again, everything's falling apart. So you have to be proactive in which you want to conquer this and reach these realities, you know, before the dunya flips another switch and, you know, makes everybody to be as scared as heck. Because whatever we're teaching, shaitan is also putting it out, that's why they're allowing the teaching to come out. These portals will appear on earth and many satanic things will be coming and the magic show begins and it has a price. If you enter towards that magic then there's a price on your soul. So people will be astonished but those whom are hearing these teachings say, no, no, the shaykh already taught us that yeah, they already have uh, portals too. So yeah, go towards the portals of Rahman, enter into the caves of a Rahman, not to be astonished by what shaitan is about to show people and, and put out onto this earth. So that, that's the danger is if this is being taught and being allowed to be taught is because shaitan is going to introduce things onto this earth and people will run to them run to them in, in bulk majority, so that, that's the danger inshaAllah. Allah guide us and protect us from the fitna of Dajjal inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, many, many questions relating to uh, the new king. Many people are asking the significance, Shaykh what Shaykh Nazim said, many questions. Yeah, don't know and don't want to be quoted for that but uh, hail to the king that Allah has sent the king upon this earth and that a good man inshaAllah and that Allah uh, open the, the heart towards its realities and it's a sign for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi Anyone want to, to post negative and bad things and he's done this, that's, that's, that will get you Allah's uh, slap in the head. To so stay away from judging people. Because everybody did something until Allah guided them. Nobody came onto this earth perfect, not the companions, not anyone. Everyone had some sort of a track record in history but when Allah guides, Allah guides. So inshaAllah Allah guide the, towards righteousness and as a tremendous sign upon this earth of the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi salam and alhamdulillah. So these are signs that, that have been waited for and this is a, a, an opening. 
Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidi. Alaikum salam, So the, about the Holy Quran reading topic, is the dress mm. different when we read surah from the holy book versus reading from a device? Yeah, if you're, you're sensitive to energy, it, it could have a, a difference in the energy versus the uh, actual book and the, the energy of the book is, is going to be much different, much cleaner and reading from or sort of ancient books, Mawlana had a, a collection of ancient uh, Qur'ans. So if you can find an older Qur'an that pious people wrote by hand then fantastic, that's the most blessed. If not then whatever will do, even if you have a computer you can print out a, a surah that you want to read and you can read from its uh, the printout. And if not then you can put the phone down, read a couple verses and then meditate and contemplate, don't hold the phone while meditating. So however it can be accomplished, again the best would be the printed, the best would be the, the, the more ancient and older Qur'ans and manuscripts that were handwritten by pious people. So if someone has something like that then mashaAllah is great. However it can be achieved just make it to be achieved inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah When I make rabita during tafakkur, my heart begins to hurt and tighten. What does this mean? Energy coming. We said before that everything has a cleansing, everything has a reality, that these energies are of a, of a jalal sometimes. They come with a might and contraction, so there's an energy coming in and not necessarily the body's energies are accepting that and, and the occupants of the body may not want that. So it can be many things and if you're not a beginner and you've been doing a long time and all of a sudden feel a sharp pain, then that can be a you know very strong tajalli coming. So you do it to the best of your ability and then try to carry it, if not then you slow down and wait. So you just become more in tune with yourself. But people are starting new. Yeah, we, we, I think we described it. So most people their home is like a, infested with you know hundred homeless people living in your house. All of a sudden you met the tariqah, it's like a police force. The next day you open the door and 20 police uh, SWAT teams are entering your home, there's going to be a fight. They're going to come and clean the homeless people and throw them all out of the, the structure. So most people they live their life like that, you know, they don't know what they've been collecting for 20 years of going here and there and doing whatever they want. So there's going to be a lot of nefarious energies that don't necessarily want to leave. As soon as you meditate a heavenly enforcement comes like a police force that comes to clean and get these energies out, you don't belong here, get up, get up. So that conflict can cause a bit of disturbance for some people. But again patient, salawats, wudu and uh, let the cleaning begin, better to clean now than in the grave. Because if that's the case imagine then how real the punishment of the grave is. Somebody just going you know 100 miles an hour into the grave with all their bad actions, they have to do this under full tajalli and full feeling and no breaks. The grave there's no break where you say, okay, okay time out, too much, too much, it's just non-stop. So better to, to do that cleaning on earth inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salaamun wa mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته